In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the intersect spatial function, which was introduced in version 2022.4. I'll walk through a few examples of how you can use this function with polygons and points, and you can use the function to determine which of these spatial objects intersect with each other in the view. And you can then use the results of that calculation to encode the marks in the view. So in this first example, I'm going to connect to some data that shows some Airbnb points in an area of London. So the data that I'm connected to has the latitude and longitude for each of those Airbnb points. And what I'm doing is just making a spatial point from the latitude and longitude using this make point calculation. Okay, I can then drag this into the view and those points will all appear. Now at first they appear as one object. You can see that in the lower left, we just have one mark. So to break out these marks, I need to bring in a unique identifier for each of those points, which is the ID field. I'll just drop that into detail. And now you can see we have over 2,800 marks. Okay, the next thing I want to do is create a point of interest buffer in the middle of this area somewhere. So to do that, the first thing I want to do is create a point. And to create this point, I'm just hard coding a latitude and longitude field, which is somewhere in the middle here. And then with that point, I can then go ahead and create a buffer object. So I'm calling this POI1, so point of interest one. So the buffer function takes three arguments. So we have to give it a geometry, which is the special point I've just created. And then a number, which I'm holding in this parameter here. And then finally a unit, whether that's going to be miles or kilometers or meters, etc. And I'll just show the parameter and you can drag these around. So I'll just put it on the left here. Okay, so I can now add this buffer as a new marks layer. Just bring it into the view and drop it onto this symbol here. And here's my buffer object. And the size of the buffer is controlled by this parameter. Okay, I'm just gonna make this really light yellow so you barely see it. Okay, so what I wanna do now is just determine which of these Airbnb points are inside the buffer area and which ones are outside. And that's where we can use the intersects function. Okay, so the intersects function takes two geometry arguments and you can use this with points and polygons, lines and polygons, or polygons and polygons. And in this example, I'm using point and polygon. So we have the Airbnb points, which are in the file that I connected to, and then the polygon is the buffer object, which I created. So this calculation is going to return true or false. True if these two objects intersect and false if they don't. Okay, I'm gonna go back to select the Airbnb points layer and then I can take this calculation, drop it onto color, and that's now coloring the points based on whether or not they intersect or not. You can see we have the true and false at the top here. And this will update dynamically as we increase the size of the buffer. So let's have a look at the data behind this view to see what's happening. Click the view data icon, and I'll just make this a little bigger. I'm just gonna rearrange some of these columns. So these are the Airbnb points, and these are created from the latitude and longitude fields. And then we have the polygon, which is the buffer object. And this is repeated for every row. And then we have the result of the intersects function. So what this is saying is, does this point intersect with this polygon? In this case, it doesn't, so it's false. And this goes down on a row level for each of these. And you see, you finally we get to one where the point does intersect a polygon, so it returns a true. And it's the results that you see in this column that we're using to encode the coloring of the Airbnbs in the view. Now for this particular combination of geometry objects, the points and the buffers, it was actually possible to do this encoding previously before the intersects function by using a distance function. I'll just show you quickly how that works. So the distance function has been in the product for a number of releases now. Okay, so the way the distance object works is you provide two spatial points and a unit of measure, and then the function will return the distance between those two objects. So in this example, I'm providing the point at the center of the buffer, which the buffer was created around, and the Airbnb point. And we can then test whether that distance is less than or equal to the buffer size, which is controlled by this parameter. So effectively, it returns the same result as the intersects, but this will only work in this particular combination of geometries we'll be using the point and the buffer. Okay, so let's take another quick look at the data to see the results of that calculation. Okay, and you can notice that these two calculations return the same result for every line, because they're essentially doing the same thing. In the second example, we'll look at using lines and polygons. So I've connected to a spatial file that has UK rivers and waterways in, and I'll just drag the spatial object into the view. And you see this spatial object has UK waterways data for most of the UK. So I've created a set of some of these rivers, and I'll just add that to the filters now. Okay, I've also created the point and buffer object as I did in the previous example. So I won't go through those, I'll just add them to the view now. I'll just format these as before. Okay, now we can create the intersects calculation. And in this example, we're using the line object and a polygon object, which is the buffer. So again, I can drag this into the view and we'll color the line objects. Okay, at the moment, all of the line strings are grouped together as one object. I'm gonna separate those out using the name field. Let's bring that onto detail. And now we can see the names of each of the rivers. Is the river Thames here. Now at the moment these rivers are split because we have part of the river Brent intersects with the buffer and this part of the river does not. So to avoid doing that I'm going to change the color to an attribute. So you can see the results of the calculation now is an asterisk. You can see that in the color as well we have false and true and then an asterisk. And um, what this allows me to do is color encode each section of the same river with the same color and this is helpful because each section of the river is actually a different spatial object. So if I bring in this identifier field, 
which is unique for each section. Okay, and you can see with that unique identifier on for each section of the river, we're having the intersects return a different result now. So we have false here, but true here for the same river. But I actually want this whole river to be encoded the same color, because it's kind of useful to see that. So I'll take the identifier off, and now we're back to the whole river being colored, the same color, even if just one section of it is intersecting with the buffer. And as we increase the size of the buffer now, you can see that the rivers begin to get encoded, the larger the buffer becomes. Okay, so a way of using intersects in the past was usually through a spatial join. And I have a whole separate video on creating spatial joins in Tableau. So I won't go into the details here, but you can kind of think of this intersects function here as like a spatial join, which you can turn on or off. So instead of using this intersects calculation to encode the marks in the view, you could use it on the filter shelf instead. And if we select true, it's kind of like we're simulating an inner spatial join, but we have the option to turn this on or off simply by clicking the filter. And then if we want, we can just drop that back on color. So it's a really nice way of just having some flexibility in your analysis with spatial objects. And you could achieve a similar result by changing your join type to an outer join as opposed to an inner, but it's just much quicker and easier to change that filter immediately in the view. So it's great to see more spatial options coming into Tableau. It's always really fun to play around with these. So I'll link to a blog post below, which has a few more links and a bit more information. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching.